It's time for books! No, no, literally, it's time for books. This is her YouTube channel. You should uh, go and go and subscribe and say hello. All right, let's turn the camera around. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm here to do my February wrap-up. So I read 17 books in February. Let me show you the stack, actually. Okay, this is the stack. So here are the books, and I'm going to take you through each of the books and let you know what I thought of them. Some of these also have full reviews on my channel as well, but I will let you know when that's the case. Okay, let me put these down for a second. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm wearing a suit, the answer is I am not wearing a suit. I'm wearing a shirt top and then just tracksuit bottoms. But you're still probably wondering why I'm wearing half a suit, and that is a nod to a movement which is taking BookTube by storm. I guess, which is just, you know, jackets. Wear a jacket, wear a nice jacket. I know um, On The Stoop has done this. I mean, Graham Quigley tends to do it, but he, he looks smart all the time anyway. And um, Justin, Ghost Reader as well, he always looks super smart. So I thought, why not? I'm gonna wear a suit for this. Just for this one video, and then we're gonna go back to looking scruffy all the time. Let's go through the books that I read in February. So we'll start with Stanley McLeod Must Die by Adrian Baldwin. So this is the book that I read for Todd and Danes. Sorry. Todd and Danes. Indie read along. So this is the book that I read for that. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is a dark comedy by uh, an indie author called Adrian Baldwin. He's previously written a book called Barnacle Brat as well. And um, basically the story in this, there are two kind of stories happening simultaneously. So the one story is that there is this serial killer called the Head Honcho going around. And basically he keeps beheading people and then leaving their bodies with humorous signs. There is actually a murder victim called Dane Cobain as well, which I talked about in my review, which is down there. But meanwhile, Stanley McLeod has been basically given a death sentence by the doctor. And he makes this bet with this uh, bookmaker that he will live to see his next birthday. And then basically as he gets closer and closer to his birthday, the bookmaker panics more and more and starts trying to kill him off. And yeah, it's dark comedy for grown-ups is how he describes his work. I thought it was great. Very unpolitically correct. Politically incorrect? Is that how you would say it? I don't know, but either way, it was still very funny, and I gave this a 4 out of 5. Alright, then we had a buddy read, so this is Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli, and I buddy read this with Chloe from Brunette Bibliophile, Graham Quigley, and Angela Hart from Books of My Heart, possibly somebody else that I've forgotten as well, which is really bad if that is the case. Um... Yeah, I mean, I don't really need to tell you too much about what this book's about because everyone kind of knows really. It's basically, it's a coming of age slash coming out story about this uh, young lad called Simon and he's exchanging these emails with somebody he only knows as Blue. And he knows that Blue goes to his school but he isn't sure who it is. And it's very cute. I found it quite hard to actually relate to it because it was so American and so distant from my own kind of school days. But uh, as, especially as well, a lot of the popular culture references just went right over my head. And I kind of felt almost alienated from it a bit as though I don't think the characters in this book would like me because I wouldn't get any of their cultural references and they'd be having these chats and I'd just be on like the outskirts. So in a way, I almost felt a bit uncomfortable reading about their lives because <laughs> I don't think they would have wanted me to. But anyway, it was still fine. I gave it, I think, 3.5 or 3.75 out of 5. And I can see why people love it. It just wasn't particularly, you know... It didn't. It wasn't a very engaging read for me. Then we have The Walking Dead, number 132, by Kirkman, Adlard, Guardiano, and Rathburn. This is one of the random, uh, like, little mini comics that my girlfriend got in some old Loot Crate boxes, and she gave to me, and I read it. I enjoyed it. I gave it a 4 out of 5. I do want to read the, the Walking Dead at some point. It's just getting round to it is all. But one day I will like get the you know the big bind ups. Then we have Cassandra Clare, City of Ashes. And uh, by the way, I've done videos for some of these. So I did a video for uh, we've got the Stanley McLeod video. I did a review of Simon vs the Homo Sapiens Agenda, and I've done a review of this as well, which is City of Ashes by Cassandra Clare. This is book two in the Mortal Instruments. And basically, I'm buddy reading this with Lisa West Coast Reads. Kit Kats Can Read and Damien Tariquez. We're basically doing a book a month in publication order, I believe. So I think the plan is by like December, there's a new book coming out and we'll, we'll be caught up by then. So this is only the second one. 
And um, yeah, it wasn't as good as the first one, but it was still okay. I said in my review of this actually that Cassandra Clare reminds me kind of like of Dan Brown. It's like, it's fine. I, I, I don't get all the hatred, you know, it's just, it is what it is. It's not like fine literature. But it's a pretty good story and the characters as well. Her characters in particular. I always I always kind of feel as though her characterization is one of her strengths, I think. I, I definitely... I've, I've been at the point where I've tried to figure out which of her characters I am. So anyway, I gave this... I think I gave this a 3.75 out of 5. And uh, we'll be moving on to the next one in March. Then we have Exploration by Shug Hanlon. And this is just a little, like, self-published little thing that this dude sent to me. And actually, looking back on it, I think I gave my written review on it. it was maybe three stars or something. I'm going to have to give this two stars. I couldn't tell you what it's about. It was mostly just, like... It was almost as though, like, the dialogue and the narration of it was there just to talk about music, basically. So he's constantly got all these music references in and stuff. But no plot or character growth or anything. I don't know. I just... Yeah, this is... <laughs> Don't, don't read this, I guess. Alright, then we have Stephen King on writing. Again, I did a video review of this. This was a solid 5 out of 5 for me, but I kind of always knew it was going to be. It's great to read just because it kind of, it covers two things. It's both a memoir and like a how-to guide to how to write like Stephen King, I guess. So for me, I got loads of inspiration in terms of how I structure stories and different bits about editing and stuff while at the same time I also got to read about how he got his start and things like how for example his wife Tabitha King um, she fished the manuscript for Carrie out of a bin and then eventually went on to become his first published book so things could have gone very different and also equally he got hit by a car a uh, van actually I believe it was and um, this book was kind of written as he was recovering from that so it's a fascinating book there's really no other book that I know of that's like it for this mixture of like say like a both a memoir and a how-to book it's very strange but very cool then we have Charles Bukowski sifting through the madness for the word the line the way new poems so Bukowski is one of my favorite authors and these poems are basically some of the poems that he left as part of an archive to be published after he died uh, this book's super aesthetically pleasing as you can see I mean I tab loads of the poems in it as well to read them out for my review of this I haven't posted the review of this yet but I will do at some point and this was great. There were so many fantastic poems in it. I also think that he got better with age. Uh, like a fine wine. Which is just probably ironic because he was an alcoholic. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed this. Five out of five. Great collection. And uh, to be honest, this is good if you're new to Bukowski or not. And, uh, yeah, if you want to see the full review of this, let me know. And I'll try and post it. And uh, then you'll get to see the poems and see whether it's your kind of thing. Then we have this little one, which I got basically for Miriam from Between Lines and Life. So this is Meet My Folks by Ted Hughes. I got this when I went to uh, the uh, Cottage Bookshop in Penn. So I'll link below as well to our little video tour of that. It, fun fact, it is my most liked video on my channel. It's got 37 likes. So people really like bookshops which gives me a great excuse to go to more as well. I picked this up while I was there, and this is a little favour and favour edition of Meet My Folks. And I didn't realise until I started reading it that this is actually a poetry collection for children. But I kind of like that, because this is my first Ted Hughes book as well. And I did quite enjoy this. I mean, it's fairly basic, because again, it is rhymes for children. But it was still quite, quite cute. It does have a poem called My Aunt Flo, and I don't know if he knows, if he was aware of the slang connotations of that but <laughs> I think I gave this a four out of five this was it was just charming and it has little illustrations with it as well so yeah then we have S.E. Hinton The Outsiders and I picked this up for like a variety of reasons one of them being that I saw Catalyst Reads talk about this on his channel I've also sort of heard a lot about this book before I think it's probably less well known here in the UK than it is in America but um I mean, it's a modern classic in my view. I read it, I gave it a 4.5 out of 5, it was great. I have seen the film as well, but the, the book is much better. It's not a very long book as well, and this basically... This is also a kind of a coming-of-age story, but it's also... It reminds me of how... You know how you've got the Montagues and the Capulets in Romeo and Juliet? It kind of takes that vibe and then just gets rid of the love story element almost of it. So we follow uh, little pony boy Curtis as he kind of tries to, I guess, to come to terms with being a greaser in the 1960s. And basically, it's, it's there's like a class war going on. 
somebody gets stabbed, that happens. Lots of people die in this book. A surprising amount of people die in this book. And Essie Hinton wrote this when she was 17. Phenomenal. Very impressed. Definitely read that one. Then I got to Finders Keepers by Stephen King, which was kind of disappointing. So this is the second book in the Bill Hodges trilogy. So I've read Mr. Mercedes, and that was a five star for me. This one, Finders Keepers, I gave it a 3.5, I think, because, I mean, King at his worst is still good, you know. But it definitely wasn't as good as the first book. And I said in my um, review of this, which I may or may not have posted, I can't even remember... I posted one to Goodreads anyway, and um, it just it didn't it didn't have that King magic. It it felt for most of King's books when I read them, I'm like I don't understand how he even wrote this. You know, like I don't understand how a mere mortal could have come up with it. And then like this one, I'm just like oh yeah, I kind of get how this story was put together. It's fairly formulaic, I guess. It didn't feel super innovative. It didn't feel necessary. I feel as though because it didn't advance the plot of the first one and I think that the third one is going to advance it along again. So I'm kind of like, well what you could have just, you, this could have been a standalone, in a, a completely unrelated standalone, you know. And that's what I think I would have done if I was him and I think it would have worked better like that. Alright, then we have Hollywood by Charles Bukowski and I basically picked this up because I know uh, Matt from Paperback Junkie has been doing his Bukowski bingo and he's been talking a lot about Bukowski recently. And this is the only one of Bukowski's novels that I haven't read and he's, again, he's one of my most read authors. And I really enjoyed his poems earlier in the month as well so I thought I'd enjoy this. This is basically, basically what happened was he was contracted to write the screenplay for a movie called Barfly which has got Mickey Rourke and Faye Dunaway in it. There we go, there's my trivia. Know nothing about films but I know that. It was funny actually, in this he was like, oh yeah, no, nobody ever pays attention to the screenwriter and I'm like, well I saw that film because you wrote the screenplay. Like, I wouldn't have seen it otherwise. But basically, he wrote the screenplay, and then they made the film. And then this book is kind of a novel based on the process of making the film. So it follows uh, his alter ego, Hank Chinaski, I believe. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is fascinating. It's kind of an inside look into, into life in Hollywood, basically. And I really enjoyed it. And this was a 5 out of 5 as well. Next up, we have Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. And uh, I guess I posted the review of this like two days ago at the point at which you're watching this now. So I read this. Well, these next three books, actually, they're all part of... Uh, I did. I took part in Time Hopathon. I also did a video blog of that, actually, so I'll link to that, too. But I took part in Time Hopathon, and there were challenges to read for the past, present, and future, basically. So this is my past book. And I also buddy read this with Catalyst Reads as well. And this is, like I say, uh, Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. And, I mean, what else can you say? It's a classic. I really enjoyed this. I thought there were some great bits in this in terms of the relationship between kind of the two main characters. There were a lot of questions asked about kind of what, you know, what makes someone evil or what makes someone bad as well. And, um... I just think it, it does, it asks all these kind of interesting moral questions that are still kind of relevant today, even if the sort of the setting itself maybe not so much. And equally, it also, I mean, the title comes from, you know, the best laid plans of mice and men go off the rye and all that. And, um, you know, they're the best, their best laid plans do go awry in this story. It doesn't go according to plan. And I think it's great to actually have that in a classic where, you know, it's it's all about the American dream and they're thinking about the future and then everything just goes tits up because sometimes real life ain't great. So yeah, 4.5 out of 5. Then for my present book, this is actually set in the past as well, but it is a new release. I read A Dark Estate by David Young. And this is book three in a series, the Karen Muller series. And it's all set in East Germany during the Cold War. So the first two are actually called Stasi Child and Stasi Wolf, and the Stasi are kind of the secret police. Well, he was mostly in uh, East Germany. My problem with this, well, there were two main problems with this. One of them was the fact that the entire storyline revolved around, like, forced testing on homosexuals to try and cure them of their homosexuality, which I wasn't a big fan of. And, ac and accompanying that, just it just meant that there were these points throughout the manuscript where there were these, like, shock moments where it was like, so-and-so was gay, and you're just like, ugh. Oh. Like, you, can't, you shouldn't be using somebody's sexuality as, as, a, as a twist in the plot, you know. And so, um, so there was that. A lot of it also focused on football as well, which is soccer for Americans. And uh, I wasn't too, too big on that, really. And there was a prologue with a Rat King in it. And I got super excited because I'm writing a novel which has got a Rat King in it. 
And then the Rat King just didn't show up again until it was a corpse near the end. And uh, I don't know, I just... I, I, I had problems with this one. I believe I gave this a 3.5. Alright, and then my future book for the Time Hopathon was Ursula K. Le Guin's A Fisherman of the Inland Sea. This is a short story collection. To be honest, most of it was kind of baffling. It was very... Um, it was very tell heavy rather than show heavy. A lot of it was just exploring how the different technologies worked and all this kind of stuff. So actually plot wise there wasn't a huge amount there and it was a lot harder sci-fi than I was expecting as well which probably didn't help. There were one or two good stories in it that I did really like but for the most part I was just kind of just being like oh come on hurry up and get to the end so I can read something else. And, and that's a shame because this is my first Ursula K. Le Guin book as well but I don't know, I do have the left hand of darkness, so maybe I'll read that and enjoy it more. I did really like in this, there were some beautiful little illustrations. So, for example... The first contact with the Gorgonids. But overall, I gave it a 3 out of 5. It was just... It was just okay. Then, because I was on a bit of a downer after um, Le Guin, I went for Agatha Christie, A Caribbean Mystery. So this is a Miss Marple book, and it's, it's kind of... Not unique, but it's unusual in Christie's work in that it's set in the Caribbean rather than in, you know, St. Mary's Mead. And actually the murder mystery element of it was pretty bog standard. Marple's very involved in this. In some of the other Marple books I've read, she's had much more of a minor role. Whereas in this, it's very much her, really, that's instigating the kind of investigation, you know. And again, obviously, it's full of little twists and turns and all ties up very nicely at the end. So it's an Agatha Christie book. I really enjoyed it. I gave it a four out of five stars. It did exactly what I wanted. I'm just going to quickly mention The Sign of Four by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Again, I posted a video review of this, which somebody disliked. How mean. And basically, I reread this for Catalyst Reads Rereadathon. I actually listened to it on audiobook. And um, yeah. It was a lot more racist than I remembered it. I, I picked this out because it's the first Sherlock Holmes book that I read. And I think my kind of memories of it from when I picked it up uh, for my London and Literature course, I think my memories of it had kind of, I, I don't know, I looked upon it fondly because it was my first one, you know. And so actually rereading it gave me a chance to kind of reassess that and it is definitely no longer my favorite. I would say The Valley of Fear. I did really like The Valley of Fear. Um, I mean, it's fine, it's a Sherlock Holmes book, but it, it is racist as well. And so, as a modern reader, I don't know, that wasn't that wasn't so good. And then my final book for this month, I'm saying I've read it because it's 6.30pm and I have 12 pages left, and it's um, the author bios. So, I will finish reading this today, but I won't finish reading another one, so my next book will go into my March wrap-up. But this is, um, please hear what I'm not saying, and this is compiled and edited by Isabel Kenyon. And this is a poetry collection with all sorts of different poetry, but it's all got a uh, mental health theme. So actually the proceeds of this go to Mind, which is a mental health charity. When I actually, you know, I, I mean, this, this is one that I got offered through my uh, book blog. And I get offered, I mean, literally hundreds of books a month and accept maybe two to five of them a month and just when I heard the concept behind this I was like I've got to read it and uh, it didn't disappoint me it was great it also has this really quirky little layout that I like where like the totals are at the bottom and um, it really works actually and it makes it quite cool I think it also has this nice little quirk where you as the reader are invited to name the different sections so there's a little blank space there for you to write your titles in and they're all grouped about different mental health things and what what surprised me about reading this actually is that you know, I mean, I suffer from anxiety and depression and I, you know, I write poetry myself. I read a lot of poetry and a lot of fiction and non-fiction in those kind of areas. So I was kind of expecting a lot of that to be covered. So, for example, I learned about borderline personality disorder. There was some representation of that in here. We had some uh, Alzheimer's representation in here, both from sufferers of it and from people who've, you know, lived as carers of sufferers from it. And so it was really just quite fascinating to see all of all of these different areas, everything is covered. But I'm gonna be doing a full review of this, but in the meantime, I'll give you my rating, which was a pretty solid four out of five. Yeah, so those are the 17 books that I read in February. It's not as good as my 22 in January, but then February's a shorter month, and I read more comics in January actually as well. Uh, I do have, I have like loads of readathons and all this and all that all planned for March. So um, yeah, I have, a, I have a lot that I already need to read for March, but um, 
yeah, I'm not going to tell you about that. I might do a separate TBR at some point, but we'll see. But yeah, now I'm going to go and uh, and edit this together and uh, see see how many books Cody from Cody's Book Corner read because <laughs> I see her as my direct competition. I'm like, I have to read more books than her, and I don't think I have this month. I think she might have whooped me a little bit to be honest, but such is life. So anyway, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of this, these books, and if so, what you thought. Do hit subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you soon for some more bookish videos. Thanks a lot.